Joachim Ballam, the first bank he ever robbed, still standing. Meet Noel Razor-Smith. The last time I was here, I was 19 years old, I was arrested for murder. Um, which, Did you do it? No, I didn't, know. A life of crime, virtually a whole life. Noel Smith was first picked up by the police at 14 and has spent 33 years of his life in jail. We were a young uh, sort of rockabilly gang, so we were all leather jackets and quiffs and steel tack cap boots and flick knives and chains. So yeah, we were. We kind of modelled modeled ourselves on the sort of 50s uh, thugs, if you like. And, um, you know, that, that was our, our base, really. It all sounds like a jolly jape, and on films and stuff like that, it does seem like that, but in real, li in real life, it's not. Not that he feels sorry for himself. His crime of choice was armed robbery, and one of his biggest regrets is that it took him so long to feel sorry for anyone else. A lot of armed robbers gravitate towards each other in prison, and they've kind of got this sort of belief that armed robbery is some sort of noble crime, that there's no victims, and that as long as you don't shoot anybody or hurt anybody, all you're doing is robbing banking institutions. It wasn't until many years later that I actually realised the trauma I was causing just by actually... It, you don't have to physically harm somebody um, to cause damage. But it was his own personal trauma that finally forced Noel Smith to change. When my son died, I thought... I, I took a look around at where I was, and I thought, I can't even go to my son's funeral, and then... All the stuff I was hearing on the landing, which I'd been involved with, all, all people talking about this job, that job, and who's a, who's a grass and who ain't a grass, and I, it, all that diamond geezer stick just wore thin for me. I just see them for what they were. I just see us as... I kind of came to the realisation that we were actually a bunch of inadequates. Yeah, so anyway, I'm getting out of shovel. Kanga brings me up to the gate, opens the gate, outside, cut me light ales, waiting here in the jam jar. I thought, he swapped oh, weapons for words. Like His latest in. book, a glossary of the language of crime. We've got mink on the wing. I've looked out the window. I thought, ah, oh, no, there's the ducks and geese. I'm getting a pull already. I've only been out five minutes. But Noel no, learnt to read and write in jail, and this is his sixth book. He credits writing with helping to save his life. That and finding an unlikely mentor. All right, cover. Acclaimed author and journalist Will Self met Noel at a party during one of his rare periods out of jail. He then stayed in touch for a bit, and I, I got Noel, uh, I introduced Noel to a literary agent who was interested in representing him, uh, and, and then he went silent after a few months. Uh, I didn't, he, he stopped answering calls and uh, it turned out that he'd, uh, he'd gone back to an earlier point in his CV, shall we put it there. Eventually Noel decided to go straight and Will became his literary agent. In one of the reviews I saw um, someone talked about, you know, they found it a bit unedifying the way the chattering classes are drawn to mm. the work by uh, mm. of, of Noel. I mean, do you consider yourself part of that? No, I don't actually. I was, a, I, I was a heroin addict when I was 17 and I was necessarily involved in the criminal subclass for many, many years. So it's not a dilettante's interest. I was, I'm, I'm for, for better or worse, hanging out with some extremely heavy people in my teens, just as Noel was. So it's, it's not a kind of chattering class's interest on my part. It's something that's really marked my life. And both men share a passionate belief in the need for proper rehabilitation in prison. If you come into prison and spend 30 years in prison and come out still unable to read and write, that's an embarrassment. That's a shame for this country. Other countries work with their prisoners, give them something from when they get out. In here, you're warehoused. What the public want is out of sight, out of mind. And actually they're prepared to pay for it. They'd rather pay out and just think, oh, we don't have to think about this anymore, than to engage as a whole society and say, because when you look at it in a wider social context, it's to do with poverty, it's to do with social disadvantage, it's to do with drug and alcohol problems. You know, no, we don't want to engage with that. We'll bang them away. He's back on his old turf, but says he's never going back to his old way of life. On the out, as the slang goes, is where he wants to stay.